definitely hear me. <laughs> okay, sick. How's everyone doing? Who's showered today? Hey, Lakeith, what's up? Hey, Kat. Oh my God, what a party. Oh, hey, cable guy. What's up? A leader of Maze Runner. You know I love all my children equally. Oh, I'm bored too. Um, I got witch hair. So, it's all. Let's, let's see who showered today. Raise your hand, like, do this thing if you showered. How am I doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> Hello, Mexico City. How are you? Who? Oh, thank you. My hair looks good. Oh, okay. Cat showered. Wow, no one's putting their hand, hand up. I love Alita too. Dab a manual consistently like you have to do it every day for it to work on you but it's it uh okay a lot of people showered all right well you know i guess i'm the only one this is a crazy time to be alive you guys i mean yikes but i'm glad you're all here there's a lot of you here i do not anticipate such a response a little bit. Um, hey, Rat King. What's up? I cannot. When's my next movie? Well, Pink Skies Ahead was supposed to premiere at South by Southwest. Hola Costa Rica, pura vida. Uh, but it, but South by Southwest uh, was canceled, and um, I feel really bummed for, you know, the globe, but also on a on a more acute level, I feel pretty bummed for Kelly Oxford because she made such a great movie and shout out to Peru for sure. Uh, she made a great movie and I want everyone to see it. And Jesse Barden from end of the fucking world is so good in it. She fucking slays. She slaps hard on a cute level. Hey, look you. Um, on a cute level. I'm cute. Uh, keep smiling. I'll try. Hey, Brazil. Well, this is great because, um, yes, season two of Undone. Yes, we need Alita sequels. This is cool because, like, I'm sort of, you're, you're talking to me, but it's not loud. Um, and, uh, it's kind of peaceful. <laughs> Does that make sense? I love you too, Ross. Um, yeah. Hey, Argentina, how you doing? Everyone okay out there? Why isn't this rotoscoped? I don't know how to, I've never done this before. I can't believe I'm doing it right now. Uh, a number of things could go wrong. I have two dogs here. They're wilding out. They just ate. And you never know because when, when you live in the barrio, it's like the fireworks could go off at any second. So you never know. But we're we're safe, we're good, we're stocked up, and, 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 yeah, enjoy my witch hair. I'm, I don't know how it works, so I just let everybody settle in, and then I just go ahead. This is the book we'll be reading from today. Have any of you read this book? Hi, wow, this is way more positive than I thought, you guys. Yikes, I was not prepared. I'm like, Ugh. but this is nice. This is, this is nice. So no one's read this book. Hey, Dev, Devin, have you read this book? Okay, so no one's, it's backwards. Oh, well, it says will not attend lively stories of detachment and isolation, which I thought was perfect for right now. Um, yes, Alita sequel. Of course I want an Alita sequel. We all do. We all do. Um, I'm really grateful to everybody. Not to make this a little bit like, uh, you know, a thing, but I'm just really grateful to be here with you guys. <laughs> I'm being serious, but everything I say sounds sarcastic, so you're just going to have to trust me that I, I care about you. And, 
anyway. Um, okay, so we're going to read, it's a book of short uh, stories by Adam Resnick, who is a brilliant writer. I think he's so fucking funny. And um, this, there's a, several stories. Some are a little too, oh, I'm trying to ease into it. So, you know, uh, this one's called Boy Refuses to Hold Frozen Turkey. You ready? Okay, it's a long delay, so. Um, okay. Boy refuses to hold frozen turkey. Ever since I was a toddler, I've had a distaste for self-promotion. I would no sooner tell some jackass what a doggy says than specify where my belly button was, or any other part of my body for that matter. Some of this stemmed from a congenital low threshold for embarrassment. And the rest can be chalked up to my basic revulsion for human interaction. I mean, this is perfect for right now. By the time I was seven or so, my mother decided this behavior was no longer cute. The turning point, I believe, came during a trip to the grocery store when I was offered the opportunity to appear on the front page of the Patriot News holding a frozen turkey with cash stuffed in my mouth. The exact concept behind the picture remains unclear to this day. It obviously has something to do with Thanksgiving. That much the principals agree on. But there's still some debate whether the man worked for the newspaper or the supermarket. I've yet to find a satisfying connection between holding a turkey and biting down on money. In the end, all that mattered was that he found me. I was standing alone at the magazine rack, minding my own business, leafing through a copy of Famous Monsters of Filmland. The photographer wore round Harold Lloyd glasses and was holding one of those old one of those old fashioned press cameras with the big flash reflector. He looked like just about every other guy my father knew, skinny tie, wingtips, and a head full of wild root. There was a little bounce in his eyebrows that he probably Hey son, is this your mother? Everything seemed to move at the speed of light. Yes, he is gonna be a newsy, you can't bite me on this. Hey son, is your mother around? Everything seemed to move at the speed of light. Joyce dashed over with her shopping cart like a community theater player whose entrance screamed, over eager. There was a brightness in her eyes as if she knew something extraordinary was about to happen. Maybe the greatest thing to happen in the history of the Resnick family. The photographer laid it out for her. I wanna put this monkey in the Patriot. What do you think, mom? He's gonna hold a frozen turkey. We'll put some cash in his mouth. It's gonna be beautiful. Mm -hmm. In the Patriot? She responded, coaxing him to repeat it. Right on the front page, the boy, the bird, the doe. It'll be gorgeous. But he's got... Such a dirty face, she giggled. First smoke in the laboratory. I love the dirty face. He's all a boy. Give me the messy hair, too. He locked my head in his arm like a TV wrestler and mussed up my hair. I wanted to kill him. They both laughed. I unconsciously ro rolled the ma magazine into a tube, tightening my fist around Peter Cushing's throat. Had I been asked, I would have let it be, know be known that I couldn't think of anything more repulsive than having my picture in the newspaper. Beyond the props, beyond the notion of putting filthy, grimy money in my mouth for reasons that had yet to be explained, how absurd to think I'd agree to put myself on display, to allow people to see my face and read my name. Forget the embarrassment of it all. What if someone recognized me in public and said hi? Christ, I didn't want to meet anyone new. Between school and other activities beyond my control, I had enough fucking people in my life. So here's what we'll do, the photographer plowed ahead. We'll set him up over there below the manager's booth and we'll hang a flag behind him. It'll be tremendous. What the hell is he talking about? And we'll get a stack of 10s and 20s and he'll chomp down on them. You know, really chomp down and show the cabbage. Joyce shrugged as if she had no choice in the matter, chirping, oh, well, I guess you're the boss. No questions, no let me think about it, just run with it. Sure, the kid will like, look like an asshole, but hey, it's going to be on the front page. The photographer whistled to the store manager, who jumped up in his elevated booth like a startled hen. He seemed to be half asleep and shaking off a nightmare, straightening his smock and bow tie. He grabbed the microphone and announced over the PA, meat department, bird, 10 pound, frozen, up front, picture. Later in third grade, I thought back to that sentence when we were learning about verbs. My mother squeezed my shoulders. Isn't this exciting? Out of all the kids, he picked you. 
Poor Joyce, so swept up in the moment that she'd lost all sense of reality and forgotten who she was dealing with. Or maybe she thought if she could distract me long enough, I wouldn't realize what was happening until it was too late. Did you hear the Keeners got a chow chow, she asked. What was the name of their old dog again? The one with the little wheels on his back legs? I'm not doing it, I said, casting the monster magazine into the shopping cart. I want to wait in the car. She took a deep breath and knelt down, stroking my hair in a funny direction so it remained messy. It's just a picture, sweetie. It'll be over in two seconds. I resented the patronizing logic. I wasn't four years old anymore, and this wasn't a tetanus shot. Certainly, she had to be aware by now of my astonishing power to foresee every conceivable downside to a situation. And this little caper, which I would never consent to under any circumstance, wasn't going to vanish in a flash of magnesium. The fallout would be long and bristly. Hey, Adam, saw your picture in the paper. There he is, Mr. Picture in the paper. That was a heck of a turkey you were holding in that picture, in the paper. Let me ask you, kid, what was the point of the money in your mouth? Give me tetanus. Give me diphtheria. Give me that weird disease that turns kids into old people. But I want no part of this jackpot. The photographer sensed something was off. He asked my mother if there was a problem. She responded with a shy part of laugh like a Tennessee Williams character. <laughs> no, he's just a silly boy, he's all. They can be positively willful at this age. <laughs> she grabbed my arm and pulled me aside. Not everything is about you, she hissed. This man is being very nice, and he was probably in the war, and the least you can do is be cooperative. I was nothing if not diplomatic. I told her the guy was welcome to take my picture as long as it didn't involve a turkey. Fury came over her. She plucked famous monsters of film land from the shopping cart and flung it back toward the magazine rack where it fluttered like a bat before dying behind the stamp machine. What makes you think you deserve that book? What makes you think you deserve anything? I do so much for you, and this one time all I ask is for... She quickly composed herself and tried a different approach, offering to take me to Hobby Shop to buy the Invisible Man model I wanted so badly. I responded favor favorably to the suggestion, with the caveat that it wouldn't require me to pose for a picture that appeared in the newspaper or any other publication. She did a slow burn, or as I recognized it, the face Mo makes right before she throttles Curly. A little pudgy man with the face of a dull child arrived clutching a frozen turkey. His white apron was mottled with blood the same color as his name tag, which was blank. He shuffled over to the manager's booth and held the turkey high in the air. The manager snapped, don't give it to me, you moron, give it to the kid. The little man walked the turkey over to me, but I turned away, refusing it. Then he carted it back to his boss, reporting in a weepy voice, but he don't want it either. The annoyed manager looked up from his clipboard and replied, what do you mean he don't want it neither? Of course he wants it. Well, I tried to give it to him, the little man explained, but he won't put out his arms or nothing. The photographer was growing concerned. He glanced at my mother and simply said, ma'am? Joyce looked like she wanted to crawl under the display of campfire marshmallows and die. Finally, she mumbled, he said he doesn't want to do it. Doesn't want to do it? Doesn't want to do what? He seemed genuinely baffled. Who in their right mind would refuse an opportunity like this? The manager grunted and stomped down the four steps from his roost, emerging through a low swinging door. He grabbed the turkey from the little man, scaring him half to death, and marched over to me. His eyes softened, and he concocted a smile. What's the matter, Sarge? You don't want to hold the turkey? I didn't answer. You know what? I might just let you keep that turkey. He eyed the photographer and repeated, I might just let him keep that son of a gun. These accents are all over the place. The photographer. Son of a gun. These accents are all over the place. The photographer. Son of a gun. These accents are all over the place. The photographer of a gun. These accents are all over the place. The photographer of a gun. 
these accents are all over the place. The photographer grinned broadly, pointing to the money, then to his mouth, and then finally at me, miming some magnificent concept he felt I was. I responded by gazing down at an ancient produce sticker that appeared fused to the linoleum, marveling at how it survived all these years. He's just so willful, my dazed mother said to no one in particular. The photographer sighed and spoke to the back of my head. Are you sure you want to do this, son? Don't you want to make your mom happy? Del Monte quality banano de Costa Rica. Son, are you listening? Moments later, I was trailing behind my mother as she finished her shopping. She was walking unusually fast, and my corduroys were swooshing like a wind turbine. Every box, jar, and sack was viciously hurled into the cart, and I noticed the back of her, her neck looked sunburned. All that cute shit, like calling me her number one helper or the best tomato, tomato picker outer in the world, was absent, replaced by dead air and an icy disregard. I wisely kept my mouth shut. I think it pissed her off more. My brother Rick found us. Five years older than me, he was allowed to wander around the shopping center alone and even play pinball at the bowling alley across the street. Now he was irritated, wanting to go home and wondering why my mother hadn't checked out yet. Well, why don't you ask your brother? She suggested, ratting me out. I gave up nothing, of course. So it was her pleasure to unburden herself of the details. Naturally, I was portrayed as the bad guy, but her retelling of the events was needlessly emotional and riddled with inaccuracies. For one thing, at no point had I thrown a fit, and I certainly wasn't tossing magazines around like a crazy person. She was the one who threw the magazine. You stupid idiot, Rick screamed in my face. You could have been in the paper. That money was yours to keep. Who cares if it was in your mouth? It was probably hundreds of dollars. As usual, he had it all figured out. Even the opportunist Rick rushed off to find, ever the opportunist Rick rushed off to find the photographer. This was a kid who craved the spotlight. Whether it was at school, Little League, or the Blue Mountain chapter of the Good Deed Bandits, he was constantly looking for a way to put himself out there. This time, though, he came up empty. The photographer was at Woolworths, still on the prowl for a cute kid with a dirty face, when Rick tracked him down. My brother did everything he could to charm and bullshit his way into the gig, rattling off one good deed after another, but he was just too old. He wasn't right. The photographer wanted me. There was just one problem. He couldn't have me. Not for all the fame and fortune he could ram down my throat. And why? Because I didn't do things like that. On the ride home, Joyce and Rick talked in the front seat like they were the only people in the car. He's got problems, Rick told her. Rick's my favorite character. He's got problems, Rick told her. He doesn't even have any friends. Do you know how many friends I had at that age? Remember the time I got everybody to sign up for the bike rodeo? Best year ever. Remember the picture they put up? Me giving the coffee can to the March of Dimes guy? <laughs> he has a good heart, my mother said. He just gets in his own way sometimes. Kids hate kids like him. I would hate him. It's only a matter of time for he gets beat up. Thanks. Oh, Gigi. Thanksgiving morning, the, the newspaper banged against the screen door. Rick ran out to get it. On the front page was a picture of Walter DeCanto holding a frozen turkey. There with a few wrinkled bills lodged between his nubby teeth. The caption below said something about Thanksgiving savings. Walter was a great ahead of me. I didn't really know him, but my mother always claimed that his mother acted entitled. So that added a nice little patina to things. Dinner that evening was quiet for, the Resnick, for a Resnick Thanksgiving. No screaming, no violence. Even my father was unusually sedate. There was an unspoken feeling in the dining room that we had lost out on something and would continue to lose out. We would never be front pagers, and that was just fine with me. I was the invisible man. Thanks for listening. <laughs> how was that, guys? Uh, I, I don't know how, you know, you know, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, I'll do it again. You just message me, and... Um, and I love you guys, and uh, stay safe out there, and hug your loved ones from six feet away. <laughs> uh, love you guys.